What we're going to look at today is uh, geometric tolerances. And before we get to that, let's just quickly review the whole notion of tolerances. Again, uh, now we're going to go on to geometric tolerances. The other way to look at tolerances is uh, a prediction of where surfaces are going to be when we manufacture them. And if that's true, then you have to think about your system and how it's going to accommodate this variation. So it's not just a matter of controlling the variation, but it's also a matter of designing a system that will accommodate parts with this kind of variation. So let's take a look at geometric tolerance. Uh, with the geometric tolerance, we're going to provide tighter controls over our geometry. And so that's the idea behind this uh, different type of tolerancing. So we've got the dimensional tolerances, we can control dimensions, but now we're going to control more than just a dimension. The notion of a feature control frame is central to identifying if you have a geometric tolerance, and we'll see that a little bit later. The other thing that you're going to have to learn are all the symbols that go along with geometric tolerances because that allows you to understand what the specification is telling you. What is a geometric tolerance? Well, first of all, we see it as some type of attachment to uh, a part feature or a pattern of part features. And so if you're going to uh, use a geometric tolerance or understand it, you're going to have to first identify the part feature or the pattern that it's associated with. As I said before, it provides get greater control. Uh, the simplest form would be the shape of the feature, which dimensional tolerance will not control that. The orientation of the feature, how it's oriented with respect to something else, and how it's positioned or located with respect to something. If we're using orientation and position, then we're going to be describing relationships between part features. So now I should be looking at my product in terms of individual part features and how they might be related and what we're trying to control about that relationship. The geometric tolerance is going to give us a tolerance zone for something about this attribute associated with the part feature. So when you think of a geometric tolerance, the first thing you should think of is what does this tolerance zone look like? Because that will affect your interpretation of that specification. Well, first let's just think about part features. When I look at a design, I'm trying to identify some type of geometry in that design, and that geometry is associated with a part feature. Now, it will either be solid material, uh, or it's going to be empty space. For example, if we look at this keyway here, we note that that slot uh, is a part feature within that specification, and it is empty space. So what we're really talking about is a set of surfaces associated with this keyway, and we want to control something about those surfaces. Versus, I have a protrusion here with this boss, and that would represent solid material. <clears throat> Over here, I've got a radial groove. The radial groove, again, you can think of that as a cylindrical slot going around uh, this axis. And that would represent, again, empty space. Same thing with the pocket here. So I might remove material uh, to create this pocket. And when I do that, I've created surfaces that describe the pocket feature. Once we identify the feature, then we can understand what the geometric tolerance is telling us about that feature. Now, we actually produce the part, and uh, as we'll see later on when we get to inspection, we ask this question, Oops. and that is, does the attribute of a part feature lie within the tolerance zone? So that is the critical question. If it doesn't, then we say it's out of tolerance, and therefore we need to go through rework, or uh, we need to do something to remediate the situation. Don't forget, we don't measure tolerances. We measure deviations from the nominal. And so when those deviations occur, they will be different for each part that we produce. The attributes that we're going to derive from part data 
that describe something about that part are things such as an axis, right? We know an axis doesn't exist, but we think of it as a line, right? Which is a simple concept. Or a cylinder. Again, a cylinder doesn't exist. A circle or a plane. These are geometries that we think of <coughs> as corresponding to our part features. And we want to control these geometries, specifically deviations from those, as we'll see later on. So at this point, we have some questions. Does our part have the right shape? Now, that's a pretty simple question. And then uh, if I look at other part features, are we in the correct position? Are we in the right orientation with these other part features? This could affect subsequent processes as we go through our series of operations in our manufacturing system. If our features are not in the correct position, they're not in the right orientation, then that could affect setups and uh, other things that we'll be doing in our system. How do you know you have a geometric tolerance? Well, anytime you see a feature control frame in your specification, that is an indication that you have a geometric tolerance. If you don't see a feature control frame, then you don't have geometric tolerance. What do I mean by feature control frame? In your CAD model or your drawing, uh, paper or electronic, you are going to see boxes, and I've colored these just so we can uh, see the different uh, components of the feature control frame, but you're going to see boxes like this on your specification. In those boxes, we're going to see information that tells us what the geometric tolerance is for a feature or a pattern of features. And then we have some type of connection using either a leader or an existing dimension line to that part feature. So we know specifically what that part feature here is. Now, this is where things can get a little tricky because sometimes it's hard to uh, determine exactly what the feature is based upon this association and when we get some practice with this hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how to make that identification. Our elements of the feature control frame are first of all the symbol. Again you'll have to come to terms with those symbols and understand what they mean. The next thing we're going to see in, in the green box here is the tolerance zone size. And then finally, don't worry about this orange box for right now, but that's going to tell us something about position or orientation information. And we'll come back to that uh, later on <clears throat> when we take a look at position and orientation tolerances. But the key point here is you should be able to identify feature control frame. And if you can, then you can say, I have a geometric tolerance. Also note that for each feature control frame, we have one geometric tolerance. Now here are some examples of feature control frames that we see in designs. Again, I've colored these to indicate the different types of information that are in there. Here we've got a leader that's pointing to a surface or a feature of some kind. So we have a connection indicating that this corresponds to that feature. Here we've got what kind of dimensional tolerance. Now at this point you should be able to identify the type of dimensional tolerance and I'll leave that up to you. But we have a symbol here that you may or may not be familiar with. That symbol is what we call the diameter symbol. And that is indicating that we have a cylindrical uh, or spherical part feature and therefore what we're interested in is the axis corresponding to that cylindrical part feature or the center of a spherical feature. Here again, we have a leader indicating uh, which feature corresponds to this geometric tolerance. Uh, another way you'll see the feature control frame is directly connected to a dimension line. So the question is, what does that correspond to? Well, it's going to correspond to the surface here where we see this dimension line extended to. So now we're saying that this geometric tolerance is going to tell us something about the surface that is connected to that dimension line. So you can see there are a variety of ways in which this can occur. You have to be aware of which feature you're talking about. I said before you're going to have to come to terms with the symbology here. 
So when you see these symbols, you should recognize that you have a specific type of tolerance. Now, in this case, we're talking about shape. And when we think of shape, we think of being straight or flat or circular. And uh, don't worry about profile for right now. We'll come to that later on because that's a little more complicated. But these are fairly simple geometric tolerances that we'll be taking a look at uh, in the next lecture. The location symbols are primarily most of what you're going to see in uh, your specifications are these symbols. And you'll see a lot of those because they have to do with position and controlling position. And these are fairly infrequent, but they do occur. We'll primarily focus on this position symbol uh, because it is so common in a feature control frame. The orientation symbols are also uh, common as well. Here, of course, we're specifying some type of uh, zone connected with an angle. And that angle uh, needs to be controlled, and therefore the geometric tolerance zone is going to correspond to some type of angular control. Perpendicularity, parallelism, very common relationships that we see in part features. Axial symbols are a kind of special purpose, and they go along with what we call axial features. Typical axial features are created on turning centers, uh, processes that have some axis of rotation, and therefore we have symmetry. The most common uh, type that you'll see are the circular runout and the total runout, trying to control how that axial feature uh, is uh, created and also to control the deviations in that axial feature uh, as it goes through the various steps in our processes. So the key concepts here are First of all, you should be able to recognize if you have a geometric tolerance, and that's because you're going to see a feature control frame. Every feature control frame corresponds to a geometric tolerance. Why is a geometric tolerance important? It's going to tell us something about a zone, and that zone is going to be a description of some type of geometry that controls variation. And then we have a tolerance symbol, as we saw in the tables, you need to interpret that tolerance symbol to know the shape and what we're trying to control. In summary, you've got geometric attributes corresponding to your part features, such as an axis, right? such as a cylindrical wall. And we have a feature control frame that's going to be attached to a part feature. The frame contains all the information for the geometric tolerance and the tolerance symbol tells us something about this attribute that is being controlled. So you have to understand the symbol or you're not going to know the attribute that's being controlled. Let's take a look at geometric tolerance zones. First of all, what is a tolerance zone? What does it look like? What are the attributes of the tolerance zone? And what are some of the effects of our tolerance zone? Well, when you think of the tolerance zone, you think of, first of all, what is the dimensionality of it? And so our dimensionality tells us something about the geometry of that. By dimensionality, I mean, is it a 2D or a 3D? And then, what is the shape of that tolerance zone? What does it look like? How big is it? How much variation do we allow? Where is that tolerance zone located? And perhaps, how is it oriented in space? The attribute values in that geometric tolerance zone are going to uh, depend upon the symbol. So that's the first thing you need to identify. And other information in our feature control frame are part features and perhaps dimensional tolerances, and we'll see that connection a little bit later. The effect of our tolerance zone. Well, if I look at this zone, it's really a boundary region, right? So we're creating this region, and we're saying something about the surface with respect to this bounded region. There could be fixed region uh, constraints here, and that could be on shape, location, and orientation. 
So we're wanting to ensure a certain shape or where the part is located or how it's oriented. And that fixed region does not move versus a floating region and it constrains shape or orientation. But its position in space, its location can be anywhere. And so we're not concerned about location, we're only concerned about shape and orientation and we'll see examples of that. The usage of the geometric tolerance zone, we've got a geometry that's being controlled and it's going to be contained and the key point here is over the length of the part feature. So when you think about that geometric tolerance zone, you're extending this tolerance zone. Again, it's purely theoretical. It doesn't exist. But we're going to extend this zone over the length of the part feature and make sure the entire part is within this zone uh, or some attribute of that part feature is in the zone. Multiple zones can be used to control a feature. Right? So we might control shape and orientation and position at the same time. And therefore, you'll need multiple zones in some cases. Typically, what you're going to see is one or two zones for a part feature. And not every part feature is going to have a geometric tolerance, but that geometric tolerance zone is highlighting that feature. It's uh, You can think of it as drawing your attention to something that's very important for that design. But it's uh, typical that you'll see one or two for a uh, part feature that's using geometric tolerance. So here's a simple cylindrical feature. And how can we control the geometry using tolerance zones? So I've got a cylindrical shape here. And if I look at that, what might I control? Well, I could control this surface here. I might be concerned about the surface in that it's cylindrical. So I would have to create a zone that somehow constrains that surface into a cylinder. And we'll see examples of that. Or I might have concern about the axis of this cylinder. And I want to make sure that that axis is straight. Or I might be interested in the location of the cylinder as defined by this axis and make sure it's in the right location. So I'd have to think of a tolerance zone that somehow constrains this axis. And you can begin to think about geometries that would do that. Here I've got a uh, part feature that is attached to this feature. And now I've got a relationship. This relationship can be described uh, in terms of the axis of this feature being perpendicular to this surface. So how could I control that? Or I might be interested in controlling this surface, which appears to be flat, and therefore we might think of a geometric tolerance zone that would somehow constrain that surface so that it was indeed flat within the tolerance zone. And then, of course, things like position. So I might have reference points here and worry about the location of this axis with respect to some reference location. So I'd have to create a tolerance zone that is going to constrain that with respect to position. Now, when we look at our uh, shape symbols, we interpret those based upon the uh, type of tolerance zone that we have. And so I've created this table here for you to think about what the tolerance zone looks like. So for straightness, for example, here, we've got parallel lines. And those parallel lines indicate a 2D tolerance zone. Over here in these two columns, we have location and orientation. And in some cases, it says NA, not applicable. And that's because that particular geometric tolerance zone does not have to be located or oriented with respect to anything else. And down here, surface profile, you can see we have a specification saying it varies, and that's because it depends upon other things, not just the type of symbol that we're using. For circularity, uh, we think of an annulus, and an annulus is a ring, right? So if I'm going to control a circle, I'm going to put something around that circle, and that something is an annulus. And then for cylindricity, we'll just extend circularity to three dimensions, and that'll give us a 3D annulus. You can kind of think of that as a tube.
and we'll see that later on. Uh, for location symbols, as uh, we would expect here, for location and orientation, we have to know something about another part feature or features that we're going to use with respect to those features. The shape is going to vary depending upon the actual feature itself, and we can have a two-dimensional or three-dimensional tolerance zone. Same thing with concentricity and symmetry. Again, those are kind of special cases uh, that we'll mention later on. But our primary focus in location is on this position uh, tolerance. For orientation, similar to location, we have to know how it's being oriented with respect to something else, and therefore we'll need a relationship between this part feature and other part features. Note for the location of this geometric tolerance zone, it's not applicable. And this is where some confusion comes into play here when you're trying to interpret this tolerance zone. It's not fixed in space, it's only fixed with respect to its orientation. So we think of this zone as somehow floating in space, but oriented with respect to something else. And we'll see that in examples later on. The shape, again, will vary depending on the nature of the part feature, and it could be either 2D or a uh, three-dimensional shape. Axial symbols are a little more complicated, and we'll see that when we uh, get to the axial tolerance zones. We have location and orientation of an axis with respect to something else. And when we do that, we'll see that we have to uh, somehow orient and locate our tolerance zone uh, so that it conforms to that relationship. If you look at dimensionality, circular runout will just be 2D, and then total runout will be used for 3D. So, at this stage, you should know the major attributes of a geometric tolerance zone. Those attributes are the shape of the tolerance zone, the size of the tolerance zone, the dimensionality, how it's oriented or located uh, in space in some cases, and what we're trying to do is control specific geometry, such as the simple axis example we talked about before. We have tolerance zone attributes that we need to identify and make sure we understand them, and then be able to create this bounded region. So in summary, your zones are going to control part feature geometry. What are the attributes of a tolerance zone? Those are the things that you'll have to identify anytime you interpret that tolerance zone. And those attributes are going to affect your bounded region. So the size, the dimensionality, the orientation, location. The attributes will depend on the feature control frame. So it all comes back to this feature control frame. You better be able to identify that and know what it's referring to in terms of our part features.